Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation, Grid Following and Grid Forming Control, an overview of inertial response. Let's start with a short agenda. As you know, this is a very quick presentation. I will start with a motivation related to low, iner low rotational inertia and inverter-based resource, IBR. Then how to deal with low rotational inertia, um, some overview about inertia response, then some explanation about mimicking inertia response and synchronous generator using grid following and grid forming control. And then some some examples using um, the European Union area separation on 8th of uh, January 2021. Finally, a closure, and that is all, okay? What is the motivation here, okay? Um, if you look, if you look the report published um, on March 2021 by the Australian Energy Market Operator, uh, they are already aware about the high penetration of um, inverter-based resources, specifically wind power and solar power plants. Okay, if you look the numbers, uh, it was 38% in 2018, 47% in 2019. 52% in 2020, that is the big number. That means 52% more generation coming from renewables, wind power and, and solar PV, and less generation coming from the synchronous generator. And to be honest, um, the lower minimum synchronous generator decreased from 13.7 gigawatts in 2018 to 10.8 gigawatts in 2020. We need to see later the numbers of 2021, but it's a clear evidence that inverter-based generation is uh, penetrating electrical power system in some countries faster than others. I will take this, um, this plot over here um, from Phil. Um, he, he published on, on LinkedIn this event that was a couple of days ago, 11th of September 2021. It was the sudden disconnection of the 500 million uh, HBDC link called NEMO. That is the interconnection between United Kingdom and, of course, Belgium. Okay. Um, what I want to remind with this, with this uh, very specific uh, plot is, you can see over there how the Rokoff start to be increased. You can see over there around 0 0.1 hertz per second and the frequency drop um, to 49.71. I just checked some numbers over there and just realized that the total generation was around uh, 26.1 gigawatts and 9.8 gigawatts was coming from inverter-based generation or renewables, wind power and solar PV. If you put the number together, this is a penetration of 37%, 37% of inverter-based generation, okay? Well, but what is happening? What is happening is we are having so much inverter-based generation. We are reducing the number of synchronous machines that we have in the system. And now, how to deal with low inertia? Well, low inertia is an issue in many senses. One of them is that the frequency start to go deeper and faster, and that is negative affecting the reliability of the electrical power system. What are the solution? Well, the logical one, adding more rotational inertia, but there is a cost over there, and also it should be long or short term, okay? And that is where mimicking the inertia, or what we call digital inertia, or emulate inertia, or synthetic inertia, whatever the name you want, that is a possibility that could be a solution, okay? Also, another solution that we explore in many countries around the world is adding very specific uh, frequency services, for instance, in the GP system, the hand frequency response. Another possible solution is, of course, management of the largest um, system frequency disturbance in some power system. That is a possibility, it's a short-term solution. However, in other countries, that is not a realistic solution. Finally, and probably I will open the door here for long-term solutions, I believe that we need to think about structured solutions, and that means some radical innovation, okay? The big question over here is how to deal with uh, low rotational inertia? How much it will cost? That is a very important question. Second, what will be, techno uh, it will be uh, technological possible or not? And if yes, how? And if that is enough, okay? Mimicking inertia is something that I have been working for many years and we are still thinking about, is that enough for the power system? 
And the inertia response, everyone know about the concept, is something that any student from engineering must know. The inertia response is basically the active power contribution that the synchronous machine is able to deliver when there is an under-frequency event. Under-frequency event, the machine ten tend to release kinetic energy from the rotor, reducing the speed, but trying to produce more active power. There is a good side on this because during the under frequency we have power delivering to the grid, but do, during the recovery period the machine starts to absorb power. Okay, this is something natural in the synchronous machine. Of course, if you have a governor, you can control here. But if you think about mimicking inertia response in in power converters, you must think about this absorbing period or recovering period. Okay. Now, when we are thinking about mimicking inertia response. Okay, um, there are many ways to do that, okay? Um, most recently, we have uh, classified or we have um, group the power electronic converters or inverter-based resources in two broad categories, okay? One of them receives the name grid following converters and the other one receives the name grid forming converter. The grid following converter has been for many, many years in the market. It's basically a power electronic converter that has some additional control loops, one of them for current control and the other one for active power, okay? The way that we use to control the system is using the DQ axis, the classical DQ axis, and in this case, we can model or we can control the converter like a current source, okay? However, on the other side, on the other side, we have the, the um, sorry, I didn't say, but the current source is typically the model that we use for PV system, but it can be also voltage source, okay? Grid forming converter is, um, is a fashion, recent fashion. However, it's not quite new, has been in many years or so in the market, especially for microgrids or isolated system, is basically an inverter that, that, uh, that has control loops to regulate voltage and frequency. And that is a very important point because allow a more sincere and more realistic replication of the behavior on a synchronous machine, okay? Um, again, and in this case, we are using a control model that is basically using voltage source, okay? Um, there are two very important things that I would like to say when we are using the, the grid following converter. We need to be synchronized to the grid. That is the reason for the word following, because we need to follow the um, AC signal coming from the grid. The grid forming is quite interesting because they can use several mechanisms in order to deliver um, a free internal frequency depending on the active power that is produced, okay? What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to tell you is that the grid forming is basically a control that adjust, adjust the instantaneous frequency in response to the active power that is measured in the system. For instance, the active power flow at the PCC. And this is calculated based on the, on the waveform coming from voltage and currents, okay? Basically, there are many, many possible flavors for the grid forming, uh, um, the grid forming control. And some of them, people have proposed the, for instance, the droop, okay? The active power droop similar to the one found on the synchronous generator controller, the governors, okay? Um, what is important to tell here is I would like to sh make a comparison between some of those cases. And to do that, I present here some experiments, okay? I, I use a very famous um, event here in Europe. Uh, I use the uh, European Union area separation on January uh, eight, um, on 8th of January 2021, okay? You must remember that in that event, um, a sudden frequency change happened when there was a separation between the northwest part of Europe and the southern east part of Europe, okay? As you can see over there, there is a over frequency event happening on the south and there is a under frequency happening on the north, okay? Uh, here on the north, we have in, at that moment, it was a deficit of generation. As a consequence, we have the under frequency reaching around 49.75 hertz, okay? Rockoff over there was minimum minus 60 millihertz per second. Situation was a bit different in the southeast part of uh, Europe. In this case, uh, we have an over frequency event, the frequency ghost, until 50.6 hertz around that and the Rokov was positive 300 millisecond per second okay 
What I will do now is I will share, I will compare the three different um, grid forming uh, techniques that I brought, but also I will include here the synchronous machine comp uh, behavior and also synchronous capacitor and grid following, okay? First experiment, we use a synchronous generator. This synchronous generator is basically a gas turbine. As you can see over there, we are following the, 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 the separation, northwest, northwest area. And as you can see during the under frequency event, the synchronous machine is, uh, is able to um, boost the power that is delivering you until 82 two megawatts okay this is very positive however as you can see in the detail in the zoom that we are showing over there you can see some oscillations and those oscillations are basically coming from the frequency okay here we have now a synchronous capacitor in this case we are using a synchronous capacitor you can see that the active power set point is zero megawatts but during the under frequency event you can see how the synchronous capacitor is able to reach a peak around 12.29 megawatts okay that is impressive then we have here the first technology that we are using with power converters. You can see here the grid following converter, the classical grid following converter as used for battery energy storage, for instance. And in this case, you can see that there is an impressive, there is an impressive 24 megawatts contribution during the under frequency event. However, every time that the frequency is changing, the Rokoff is changing, and you can see some uh, contribution and then charging the battery during the under frequency event. That is a no no. Okay, here we have the inertia power contribution from the synchro converter. You can see 168 megawatts during the under frequency event. Here you can see the drug control. The drug control follow a linear relationship between the active power that is produced and the frequency deviation. That is the reason that you can see that the contribution reaching 160 megawatts is almost linear. And you can see a bit more um, behavior here coming from the virtual synchronous machine. Virtual synchronous machine um, control the internal rotational speed of this, uh, of this power converter using the delta P, the power desviation in this case this machine is able to deliver 191 megawatts okay now i would like to share uh, to close my presentation i will do it very very fast here extremely fast but with few ideas that i would like that you take away okay the first thing that we need to think about is when we are working in low rotational inertias we increase the requirements of system services, uh, specifically, for instance, frequency services, okay? And what we need to understand is that the power system already has some inverter-based uh, inverter resources. And not all of those inverter-based resources, they are able to deliver um, those services, frequency services. Some of them, because they are related with some primary energy resources that they are not dispatchable or they are weather dependent, they are not able to cope with the um, challenges coming from mimicking the inertial response. For that reason, what I want that you take away from here is we need to understand that there are some converters that they will not be able to uh, deliver those services, but we have another kind of flavors for controls in, in, in grid connected or inverter based resources. And in those uh, flavors, we have the possibility what we need to think about is how to coordinate this swarm or IBR, inverter-based resources, and they will be able to fulfill the requirement of those frequency services, okay? It must be clear, not all the inverter-based resources, they can not provide all the services. For that reason, some of those IBR will be used for some services like voltage regulation, uh, reactive power production, and so on, and other must be used for inertia response, for instance. 
Um, the IBR have the possibility of providing services, but we need to be careful about the prime mover, okay? For instance, wind power plants, solar power plants, they have the possibility of providing inertia response. However, you must be aware that those plants must be derated in order to create reserves to cope with the inertia response. And now the question is, what is the technical and financial cost of doing so? And how we can motivate somebody, uh, some actors inside the electrical power to do so, okay? And battery energy storage, they look better pro for providing services. Many countries around the world, Australia and Great Britain, they have been working with batteries to provide services however the interesting question is regarding recharging okay grid forming and grid following converters there are many flavor probably too much here in this presentation i present some results regarding synchronous uh, uh, virtual synchronous machines synchro converters and groups okay you can see that the synchronous converter and and the virtual synchronous machine they have similar behavior okay if the frequency deviation is not so much and the, and the grid is so strong you will not see so much deviation because the frequency is not changing so much but if we are in a weak grid, you will see very, very different uh, response coming from the synchron converter and the virtual synchronous generator, okay? Drop is one of my favorite. Drop is a linear relationship, simple to set, simple to activate. And um, what I want to tell you is that there are so many flavors that we need to think about, about guidelines. We need to think about a formal definition of the services coming from those grid forming converters many people are thinking about grid forming uh, um, control techniques as a solution for low inertia system i must be honest i totally agree with professor tim green from imperial college that during a presentation a few weeks ago he was asking is enough the grid forming converter to provide the services to the grid and i totally agree with him we need to think about is a combination of services that they must go to the grid in a very coordinate way, okay? For instance, frequency control settings, short circuit contribution, and so on, okay? Finally, I would like to, share, uh, to close my presentation making you aware that we need to rethink about the protection systems. Uh, mm, the grid following uh, control techniques is enabled replicating in some sort the dynamic behavior of the synchronous machine, but there are limitations like, for instance, short circuit contribution, negative sequence contribution, and zero sequence behavior, okay? As a consequence, the traditional overcurrent uh, protection system cannot be directly applied, okay? There are some papers already published re regarding the negative sequence uh, behavior of those inverter-based converters okay resources finally um i would like to, to bring here that we are having new network equipment for instance the statcom plus and i believe that those kind of statcom will be a very successful and a very good substitution of keeping synchronous compensators in the grid okay well um almost 18 minutes Thank you very much for attending to this presentation. And I think it's time for the panel and, and time for some question and answer. Thank you very much, all of you, for attending to this presentation. And I will say bye now.